Everything that I need to generate $70,000 from my app portfolio fits inside this box, including the three crucial items that every app developer needs to build, promote, and market their apps. I've been building my app portfolio from our tiny little house. It was the thoroughfare of all the traffic but now we've moved into a new place. I've got my own designated office and I thought this is the perfect opportunity to unpack the three things I need to manage my app portfolio business. The most important thing as an independent app developer that you can have right now to grow your apps isn't a MacBook and it isn't an iPhone, it's actually a microphone. Since I started my YouTube channel, my revenue has grown from $10,000 per month to $70,000 per month. Absolutely extraordinary growth. I never ever anticipated it when I set up my channel. I thought I was gonna be documenting the struggles of being an indie app developer. But it turns out that when you tell your story and you get in front of the camera and you make it personable and you're vulnerable and you teach people along the way, people wanna support you and they download your apps. But the other thing that I think happened was it challenged me to come up with new ideas and do tests, do things that I probably wouldn't have done if I was just building on my own and being quite conservative with what I was creating. And one of the first challenges I did was a paywall with a weekly subscription and an annual subscription. It worked and it grew my revenue exponentially. The other challenges that I've done is I invested $50,000 of revenue that my business has created back into buying apps that generated no or little revenue. And then I've been growing those apps as well. And then that has actually increased my revenue again. So it's this weird dynamic where just getting a microphone, talking what I'm building, bringing it into existence, bringing people along the journey has exponentially increased my revenue, exponentially increased my passion and exponentially increased the people that are communicating to me and the fun that I'm having doing this thing. So if, if, if you get anything from this video, the message you have to receive is stop what you're doing, get yourself a microphone and just start recording. If you think that you can't do it, have a look at my first video that I did. It was bad. Next in my box is my MacBook. Bet you didn't see that one coming. This is my MacBook M3. I've got 38 gigabytes of RAM in it, which is a really weird number actually, because most, most sort of go by the power of two. I don't know where the extra two RAM, two megs of RAM came from, but this thing is a beast. It's an M3, it's not the latest model, but because I've upgraded all of the RAM in it, it means that it's just gonna last for multiple generations, I think. My previous computer was a MacBook M1 with eight gigabytes of RAM. That served me well. I thought I could upgrade the RAM later on. Turns out you can't. So my advice is go with the newer models of the MacBook Pro if possible, whatever your budget entails, but just make sure that you upgrade the RAM to the absolute maximum. Xcode for creating apps is very, very sluggish on the M1. Having that extra RAM is important. With the M3 MacBook Pro, it now has an SD card slot, so you can actually upgrade the disk space the M1, you couldn't do that. That means that the disk space isn't as crucial, but I did get a one terabyte disk space. That is item number two on my list of the most important things you need to build apps. Number three is the most obvious you can think of. You need an iPhone. Actually, I think you need an old iPhone. I have two iPhones. My old iPhone is a iPhone mini 12. And this is actually a really good device to build on to make sure that apps are running smoothly on older devices. I'm finding only 10 to 20% of users are actually upgrading to the latest iPhones when they come out. Most people are using an older device. So if you're not optimizing your code to work on those older devices, then most of your users are gonna have a poor experience. It's kind of a superpower to target older devices because not a lot of developers are doing it. And I've got my iPhone 15 Pro. This is my daily phone. 
not the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I don't need the big screen. I don't actually like the big form factor of those bigger screens, but this one does me really well. And I wanted to have a phone that would be compatible with all of the Apple intelligence stuff that's coming out. And I didn't necessarily want the iPhone 16. I don't need that extra button. And from what I've read, the iPhone 15 Pro seems to be the top leading bang for buck when it comes to purchasing at the moment for the latest versions of iOS and the latest Apple intelligence stuff. 